everyone and welcome back to Metamaniacs and today I won't be coming with gameplay but instead I'm going to mix it up a bit and I'm going to be bringing you guys my deck profile for my first draft of Yoshimitsu which was featured in last week's gameplay video and moving forward I think I'm going to try this off and on kind of deal where one week I'll have gameplay the next week I'll have something like a deck profile or a card tech or something of the like. Just trying to get my feelers out there and see what you guys are interested in. I know some people have been asking for deck profiles and other stuff, and normally we have them, but we normally get them when we go to tournaments and we're interacting with the community, but giving us how COVID has kind of locked us down this year, I'm improvising a little bit, and I just kind of want to practice, and uh, since I've been making a lot of decks, I thought might as well feature some of the decks that I make and my reasoning is behind them. Keep in mind, I am not a, like, super mega professional or winner of some, you know, Grand Nationals or Worlds Tournament or anything like that. But I have to say I'm at least cleanly an average player. I'm not terrible, but I'm not amazing. Uh, I can pull out some amazing stuff, but more often than not, I just like to make decks for the fun of it. I like the puzzle of deck building. So I'm going to present to you guys some decks that uh, maybe just be jumping off points or might just you know, spark some interest for playing a specific character or giving them your own spin on it. So uh, without further ado, let's hit the table. So I'm going to be bringing, as I said, my Yoshimitsu deck that I played uh, last week. Um, it is a first draft. I will not say that this is refined in any way, shape, or form. Yoshimitsu just seemed interesting. And then my buddy suggested him to me and told me to make an all deck for it. Um, there is the caveat, normally I make stuff that isn't just a single symbol on every card, but during this last couple, this last month or so, I've been challenging myself based on viewer requests and, uh, my opponent requests, they'll, they'd choose my character and I'd make a deck and they'd choose the symbol and every single card has to have that symbol. I cannot off symbol anything. So I know some of you in the comments might be like, oh, why didn't you run X card? It would have been so good in this deck. It's probably because it didn't have all, or I just didn't notice it. As you guys may know, there's a lot of cards in UFS, and I'm a fairly new player. I've only been playing for about a little over a year now, so I have a good grasp on the card pool in Standard, but there are still some cards that just kind of slip through slip through my grasp, and I don't really see it. And uh, our local meta maybe doesn't play it, and considering we haven't been able to meet for physical cards for almost this entire year... I haven't been able to see other people's viewpoint outside of my online friends. So, let's get to the actual cards here. So, of course, we're building our deck around Yoshimitsu here. And um, he has an interesting ability that I like. I'm not a huge fan of five-handers. He's a five-hander with 29 starting life. So, he's a, honestly a little bit low for five-handers. Most of them have above 30. But he makes up for it with his stellar abilities. So, his first ability is Enhance on a 5 plus your next printed high attack will get three damage and your next printed mid attack will get three speed keep in mind that's not th that effect stacks it's not if your next attack isn't a mid or a high you don't get that buff it's just the next printed one you play so it, let's say you have a chain of attacks going you can have the last attack be a high and the only high in your set and it'll get plus however many times you use that as long as you haven't played a printed high before that um, another cool thing is most of my starting attacks or cards that I ideally like to start my combat with will be low attacks, so they don't benefit from this, so you don't really lose any steam from starting off on an attack when you wish you would have played it next. And his other ability, which is probably more so the more important one and the thing that actually brought me to be more interested in this, in this guy, is a reaction once per turn. Whenever you make a check, you may add two to the check. If the card that you checked had weapon keyword, then you get to draw two cards. And this is part of the reason I didn't mind that he was a five-hander, mainly because him being a five-hander doesn't matter a lot of the time if you load your deck with weapons like I did or I decided to do and most people do. So when you're making your checks, not only are you able to more easily make checks when you need it, but when you don't need it or if... You just happen to check something when you need it as a weapon. You'll just get to draw two cards, making you a virtual seven-hander, assuming you use this at least once per turn cycle. And this is just once per turn, which means you could use it both on your turn and the opponent's turn. 
So there might be some turn cycles where you're going to be a nine-hander, which is pretty, pretty bonkers when you have 29 health and an ability that buffs speed and damage for your primary attacks. Speaking of that, let's get into the primary attacks. So uh, I'll keep him face up. And I'll just be flipping them over as we go across, just so you guys can kind of have a flow here. We'll start off with our weapon attacks, which, given our response from our dude here, we're going to want to make sure that we have a fair amount of weapon cards in the deck so we can maximize that plus two draw. So, for the first weapon, um, we'll go with the most expensive as far as difficulty is concerned, and then go to the cheaper cards as we go along. And then we'll hit our last two cards that are just kind of one ofs that are just, they help. So, the first one, of course, that probably a lot of people thought of is Guilty Throne. I run three copies of these bad boys. Um, that's just a little too expensive, in my opinion, to be running more than three. Uh, you want to start your turn with it, or maybe use his ability to play it as your second or third attack. But I feel like third or more attack is just, it's... It's too difficult, in my opinion, unless it's going to end the game. Uh, but the attack itself has a 3 low. Uh, it's 6 speed with 7 damage mid. So you can capitalize on your personal enhance on Yoshimitsu if you do decide to play it, not as your first attack. And uh, it has an all enhance that allows you to draw 3 cards. That already is bonkers as it is. It also has weapon keyword and fury. Weapon being the important one here. And it has a second enhance, which makes the draw three even more potent or allows you to set up the rest of your turn. You get to reveal the top three cards of your deck and then you may choose to remove them and then stack two cards from your discard pile on top of your deck instead. Or you can keep them there and put them back on the top and just keep them so you know what's there. Uh, more often than not though, you're going to either be grabbing something from your discard pile to stack them and then drawing, or if you already have what you need in your hand, you're probably going to want to draw the cards first and then stack stuff on top to ensure you get the checks you want for the rest of your turn. And again, we run three copies of those bad boys. The next attack we'll go over is the guy's... Oh, the guy. The next attack we'll go over is Yoshimitsu's signature attack, Ghost Thief Funeral. Now, this card is a bit pricey. But uh, it's well worth the cost, in my opinion. It is a 5 difficulty, 6 high for 6 damage. It has Weapon and Fury, and it allows you to discard a Momentum, and if it's not blocked, the enemy will lose 3 health, and he'll you get to draw 3 cards. So it's just a ton of value if they're not going to block. And at 6 speed, even if they have a couple foundations, it's going to be kind of difficult to block this, especially if they have, you know, if this isn't your first attack and they blocked other stuff or... Countless things that could happen during your turn. Another thing to note, it is a mid. So with Yoshimitsu's Enhance, the mid attacks actually get speed, which, you know, helps you push this attack through even more. Because if you have even one of these off, you get 9 speed, which, even with a nice field of foundations, is going to be very iffy whether you're going to be able to stop that. And then they're going to take more damage. It also has a second Enhance that allows you to check a 4+. And then if your opponent's at desperation, you get to destroy a foundation. Again, just ma just value all over this card. And it has a one high block. Fantastic card. And we run four copies of Ghost Thief Funeral. Now, before we get into the other cards, we'll continue on with our weapons. Starting with a card that may not be the best in slot for this. Um, but under all, I thought it was a fine addition. It's also just a card, if I'm being honest. I don't see a lot of people play. And I just personally like it, and I think the art's cool, so that's a little bit of the reason why I threw it in this deck. But it is also a beefy, potent opener that it just kind of has to be answered. The opponent has to block this more often than not because it's just a straight 8 damage. It's a low 4, which in some cases they just won't even be able to stop it. And uh, it has a plus 3 mid block, which isn't the best on an attack, but we personally don't care about that when we have a literal hand cannon here. It's a weapon, so it triggers on all our weapon abilities. And its first enhance is if your opponent blocks it with an attack card, they lose 4 vitality. Um, the big reason why that's exciting is because more often than not, the really nice block modifiers on cards are on attacks. Most foundations have 2 to 3 unless they're a special or, a, you know, something like 
the zero low block that makes you lose a health when you block with it. There's generally a downside or its effect just isn't that good. So most of the time, if they are going to block or they really need to block, they have to use a weapon card. And in this case, if they do, then they lose, a, you know, half the damage already. So it's like a pseudo throw in that case. And if they half blocked it, then they're taking the full eight damage. The second enhance is also pretty good if you decide to play it as your second or third attack in the chain. And even though it's a six difficulty, you can use Yosemitsu's once per turn ability to boost that check to make sure that you make it through. And uh, it states that if the attack, if this attack is preceded by a weapon attack, which we have quite a few of those, then your opponent loses two vitality and they cannot play action cards for the rest of turn. So that means you won't be able to hit, be hit by stop. They won't be able to girl brothers anything. They won't be able to revoke anything. They basically lose a lot of options considering there's a lot of really good actions out there that people run. It also means they literally just can't play action cards, which if I'm Remembering correctly, they can't block with them either, which is good. Like I said, it stops things like stop, so they won't be committing your character randomly, which is just fantastic. And then again, it's just a boatload of damage on a card, and it's decent speed as well. The last weapon attack that we actually have in this set will be New Song Style Scarlet Meteor. Now, for most of you, I don't even have to say anything past the name. You'll totally understand why this card is in here. It has weapon has powerful and it has breaker two and this card is just insane on so many levels it's a five speed high for five so base stats are also great it's a one mid block amazing block it's only a five diff and it's a three check i'm still not sure how this card is a three check but it's bonkers good and we haven't even gotten to the enhances which are just icing on the cake in this deck you may destroy assets in addition to discarding momentum with its first enhance to pay for the powerful which we do run a couple of assets so sometimes that'll be the deciding factor between your opponent losing is you just like i'll chuck these assets that no longer have use for this turn to make this attack lethal then they have to answer it its other one is a response card pool that isn't used that often you can destroy an asset after an action card is played to cancel it i have used it in the past and it has done me some value but it's not the reason it's in here it's just a nice like i said icing on the cake and then we have destroy one foundation to add one asset or foundation from your discard pile into your staging area. And this is the enhance that really brings this card to pretty much any deck that can play it. So we'll get into our foundations and assets later, but it's pretty nice to just be able to juggle assets and foundations whenever you need them. And then, of course, if you juggle in an asset, you can then, you know, use its effect and then burn it for powerful if you're in a pinch. The next cards we got here, of course, is another one that everyone who plays the game will understand why it's in here already. It's a Nutcracker. Uh, it's a fantastic card. I, I personally don't quite think it's worth its payment price if you wanted to buy the card. It's a great card, but there are other cards that fill the niche, in my opinion. But uh, we can get into that another time. This card is fantastic, nonetheless, at a four difficulty, super cheap. You can... Sometimes just toss it out on turn one, especially if you go second. If you have no two checks, it's fan. You just you know punch people for eight. It's great. It's a four low for four damage and two mid block. Its keywords does not include weapon, but we don't care because it includes breaker two. It has ex three in case you randomly to boost some speed to get this last attack through, and it has an enhancer. You'll add a foundation from your discard pile into your card pool and draw a card. And we do run a couple of cards that ignore progressive difficulty. So essentially, you just get to draw a card for free. And it allows you to just boost this damage by four if the opponent is a male character by printed value. And the reason why I state that specifically, because for some of the people that are coming in, uh, the newer cards don't have a printed gender. And the way it's ruled is, is if you are using an effect that calls for something that isn't on the card anymore it essentially is ruled in favor of whoever's playing the card. So in our case, if we're fighting someone who does not have a gender as a printed value, we'll automatically just get the plus four and assume that they are male, regardless of what we may know about the characters themselves. It's a, it's kind of a hairy ruling, but they had to rule it one way or the other, and this is just how they decided to rule it. So as we go forward in the game, this card, I could actually see being better and better simply because 
the more they print characters that don't have printed genders and the more people are using characters that don't, it basically just means this enhance gives you four damage all the time. We will move on from the four copies of those to a card that I just included because, again, it's one of my favorite cards and it actually works really well if you can get it to go off when you need it, which is Rando's Spirit Gun. It is the only two check that we run in this deck. It is a five diff with a plus one mid block. It has EX2 and powerful four, and it's a five mid for five. And this attack will get plus two, plus two off its first enhance if it has received a speed and damage buff at some point during the turn. And we have a couple of foundations that can easily give it a speed and or damage buff. And assuming it's the second card, which we definitely want to play this attack second in our string, then we will be able to use its second enhance, which is your once per turn abilities can be used a second time, which in our case, we have our Yoshimitsu here, our reaction, the plus two to any check and possibly draw is a once per turn, which means you can use this on the Randall Spear Gun, make sure it gets cast and then refresh that ability and potentially drop to four cards on your turn. In addition to pretty much guaranteeing most of the checks, or not most, two of the checks on your turn, which if you pass the first check of flying colors, you're pretty much going to pass both of these unless you get really poor checks off of this ability. And um, yeah, and then like I said, it has powerful and EX, so if you just need to push that extra damage through, you can just blast it through, and uh, it's pretty great. Two copies of those bad boys because I want to minimize the two checks if necessary. And the next two cards are kind of tech cards, if you will. I have Reduction in the deck, which is one of my personal favorite cards. It's got Breaker 2, it's a 1 mid block, it's a 3 cost attack, 1 mid for 1, but the real reason it's in here is the static of if it's in your card pool, all your attacks the rest of the turn get plus 2, plus 2, and your opponent's considered at desperation no matter what their health is at. Which, if you remember some of the other effects such as Ghost Thief Funeral, if they're at desperation you can destroy foundations and do a couple other cool things. Um, the main reason we have it in here, though, is the plus two, plus two. And the only reason I have it at plus at one copy is simply because with a five-hander, I don't feel comfortable loading my hand with attacks that are set up. Um, in my opinion, it just doesn't work very well because you'll have all these setup cards and then you'll have maybe one. If you're extremely lucky, you'll have two attacks to really push the, the, you know, the benefit of this plus two, plus two. So I have the one in here because we have other ways once we get to the foundation lineup that we'll get into on how to cheat it into your card pool in the middle of your turn to buff all your attacks without having to take up cards in your hand. And then, of course, it's always just a nice block with the breaker, too. The last card is another tech card that is also just really nice. It's a five diff, one high block, four mid for eight damage. So it's a mid, so we'll get the speed bonus, making it a potential seven for eight damage. Um, it has Desperation 4 if you manage to get a Desperation. It does not have Weapon, but uh, it has the first enhance of you lose 3 Vitality. And since you have pretty chunky Vitality being a 5-hander, you can commit the opponent's character. And if they don't want you to do that, they can pay 6 life to cancel it. And that's a lot of life. So if they're just hemorrhaging life while you're throwing all these big attacks at them, they're going to go down pretty quickly. Or they won't be able to pay the 6 or won't want to, so they'll be forced to shut off any potential abilities such as Kuobara's ability to cancel damage, although I don't think they'd, they'd commit it, even though 6 is a lot. And then if you manage to go to Deadlock, which doesn't happen very often, you'll get to name a card, search your deck for all copies of it, and add it in there, which, again, I don't have to explain why that's a fantastic ability, but uh, it's there. It's uh, mainly just there for the committed character and the beefy damage. Again, this is why I only have it at one copy. And that is it for our attacks lineup. So we will move on to our assets and actions next. Over here, we'll start with our four assets. I have United Kingdom of Smash. It allows you to once per turn, uh, on your opponent's turn, you can pay two life after an attack is played to draw a card. Since we are a five-hander, sometimes things just aren't going to go in our favor and we'll really need to potentially get blocks in our hand. The other one also kind of feeds into this in addition to having a on-demand buff when we need it. You can commit it, and this attack will get plus two speed or plus two damage, and you add a foundation from your staging area to your hand. And uh, this is in here because of an action card we have. Also because, again, like I said, if we really need a block of a particular kind and we have it on the field, we can just pick it back up and use it to block something. And 
potentially buff our own stuff damage as well. Uh, the next one will be, I forgot how to pronounce this, Pudau Bone Splitter. Um, it's an older Red Horizon card. I, again, I haven't seen this one played much, but it has the weapon keyword. And it has the interesting ability to keep foundation or assets committed. During, or they do not ready during your the ready step. And the reason why we have this is, assuming we don't have our United Kingdom of Smash on the field, we don't really have any of our assets that commit. But if we're fighting something like Ash or anyone else that has commit abilities on their assets, this is just a nice way to turn it off. Um, we also have a form that allows you to commit this and one other thing and in your opponent's staging area. And if your character's hand size is less, you get to draw a card. So it's basically card draw because more often than not, being a five-hander, there's a lot of people that play six and seven-handers. We'll get to draw a card off this and commit something of our choice in the opponent's area before we start doing anything crazy. Then we have two copies of Yoshimitsu's personal asset. It has weapon, of course, and then once per turn on a 7-plus check, after you play a weapon card, you can destroy a foundation. Um, it's great to be able to destroy specific foundations that might be an issue for you. It's uh, on a reaction, so you can shut down stuff that might be troublesome early on, whether it's, you know some random reaction ability to your card being played or something like cage fighter that might make it hard for you to play your next thing it's just a nice asset to have it also has an enhanced plus five uh, if you have three or more weapon cards which given all the weapon cards is a good chance we'll have it more often than not you get to draw a card which again with a five hander drawing cards is a good thing it also has a plus one block and a six check which is great six checks are i'm a big fan of if anyone knows me I love loading my decks full of six checks. Next, we'll go over our assets. We got one copy of Yoshimitsu's asset, or Yoshimitsu's action, which has the weapon keyword. It unfortunately has a three check, but it's worthwhile. It's a zero cost, and it allows you to just give something plus two um, on a reaction if you make a check. It's, you know, nice to just be able to push through checks. Or the main reason I have one copy in here as well is... You can remove this and discard one weapon card on a 7 plus and you just remove an attack. So the opponent plays something you really don't want to see. They play that clutch matricide or, you know, they play a nutcracker and you're not ready for it. They'll just be like, boom, discard a weapon card, get that out of here, cancel the attack altogether. You can also do it since it's on enhance. You can wait till they blow a bunch of effects and, you know, potentially spend resources or destroy their foundations using different things and then you remove the attack after they do a bunch of stuff to buff it up the next action we got two of them in here it's main target actually it's only target is going to be nutcracker but we have some other interactions with it as well so it's main it's main thing here is on a three check or on a three difficulty you'll get to add one slam attack with a difficulty of four or less from your discard pile to your hand the next time you play a copy of that card, add this card to your staging area face down. Now this will come into play with a couple of different things. So first of all, you get to grab, whoops, wrong thing. We get to grab Nutcracker, which Nutcracker is a fantastic attack and it's nice to just randomly grab it when it's in there, whether you need it for a block or you need more often than not to punch people with it. Great. The next thing that's pretty cool about it is since it goes face down in your staging area, once you do have United Kingdom of Smash, you can pick that up for either a block or pick it up on your turn, buff your attack, and then have this in hand to then play after that attack resolves, grabbing a Nutcracker, playing the Nutcracker, and then putting this back down face down for use later and just kind of pseudo loop it as things go along. It also has a second ability of reaction remove after your opponent adds a foundation to their staging area during combat phase, remove it. I don't use this very often, but I can't say I haven't used it at all. There has been a couple clutch times where they tried to do some sneaky stuff and get it in their staging area, and then I really didn't want it there, and I was happy I had this in hand. It does, however, have a 4 check, but given all the other stacked abilities on it, we'll forgive it for that. And that will be all of our assets and actions, so we'll go up to our wonderful foundation line. Starting from the left here, we'll go over our one-ofs in the two difficulty category. I have them separated by difficulty, just if anyone's curious. We'll start off with Initiate Launch. It's a 
you know, too difficulty. It's a fantastic card. It's got a three block, five check. It is unique, which is a part of the reason we're only running one copy, but it has a twice per turn that after a keyword ability is played, you get to ready it and it's playable while committed. We don't have a ton of keyword abilities outside of a couple powerfuls and an EX here and there, but it's mainly for when the enemy starts doing stuff like stunning or using any of their other random stuff such as gauge. You just get to ready it over and over again twice per turn. The other reason we have it in here is flip. If your printed hand size is less than your opponent, this attack gets plus two damage. Again, it's not a super potent ability, but sometimes that plus two will be the difference between winning and losing a match. And you have the five hand size, so might as well throw in a copy. It's pretty great. The next Atar doesn't really need an introduction either. True Identity, give plus one to all your checks on a form. Fantastic. Don't need to say anything else. Again, another card that doesn't really need an introduction, Wandering Pirate. Two diff, four check, unique. That at the beginning of your opponent's ready step or combat step, you get to ready this foundation and it has a reaction twice per turn. Whenever it is ready or committed, you may ready another foundation in your staging area, and this is playable while committed. And then the last one here is Living Pendulum. Oh, oops, I forgot to flip these bad boys. The last one here is Living Pendulum, a unique. Again, this is why we only run one. It has a four check, which also makes it less ideal and no block. But uh, it allows you to commit after you lose vitality due to an opponent's effect, and your opponent will also lose two vitality. It doesn't cancel the effect, but... It is nice to at least do eye for an eye there. And its last ability is commit after your opponent plays an ability that modifies the speed of an attack, cancel its effects. This is a fantastic effect, especially if you're trying to push stuff through like your ghostly funerals because you want to make sure that uh, they don't do any shenanigans and lower its speed because you want to make sure you're getting that lose three. And since we have beefy attacks in general that have decent speed, keeping them as high speed as possible just ensures that we're going to push that damage through. Then we'll go to the four of in the deck, which is Yoshimitsu's Foundation. It has a three low block. It is the original mechanical ninja. It allows you to reaction in the card pool. After you play it, your next weapon card gets plus two, which will help you play attacks later on. If you're, you know, you want to play it in there, play an attack. It counts as a weapon card, so you'll be able to get some interaction here with your asset to draw some cards. And uh, it also comes with two enhances that allow you to give it plus one damage or plus one speed, depending on if it's mid or high. Keep in mind, this is flip-flopped from the character power. So mid gets speed, high gets damage. For this one, high gets speed and mid gets damage. And the reason why that's important to call out is because our rando spirit gun, if you buff both its speed and damage, you can give it an additional plus two on its effect. So this pairs nicely with that because we can boost up its speed and or damage with Yoshimitsu and then use this foundation that we have four copies of. So more often than not, it will be on the field and uh, give it the other one to make sure we can get that plus two every time. The next thing is on our weapon package is Yoshimitsu's other foundation, Manji, nu nun Manji Ninjitsu, which is, of course, weapon keyworded foundation as a okay three block. And a five check, it is a two diff, and it allows you as your first form to add the top card of your deck to your momentum, which helps with Ghost Thief or any of the other powerful or EX keywords we have. Or if you're Yoshimitsu, you can just heal four. It's pretty dope, it's not unique, but it is a first form. But uh, it's still nice to be able to have the choice of getting a free momentum or healing four at the beginning of each turn. It also has another form once per turn to discard a momentum and add one weapon card from your discard pile to the top of your deck. And since we have a plethora of ways of drawing cards, this is a fantastic synergy with all of those because you can stack the attack you need for your attack lineup and then use the other ability to get a momentum and then draw it with whatever draw effect you have. We have three copies of those. The next weapon card is Stolen Sword. It is a weapon keyworded foundation. I think I said attack, sorry about that. It is a five check with a three mid block. And it has, whenever you play this card as a static, your opponent commits one foundation, which is cool. And it also has Enhance Reveal one weapon card from your hand, which we have a lot. Uh, the next time you play a weapon foundation, add it to your staging area. And since we have two copies of this, plus three copies of the ninjutsu, plus four copies of the original ninja, plus five copies of some other ones we'll talk about here in a second, 
we have a lot of foundations that we can just play and immediately have in our staging area to both clear our card pool out to make way for attacks and give us on-demand foundations for when we need them. The next one is going to be Ivy's 2 diff, 5 check, or yeah, 5 check. It has Breaker 2, so it's 3 mid block is a little more enticing there. It has Weapon Keyword, of course, and it allows you to commit and reveal the top card of your deck. And if the revealed card was a ranged or Weapon Keyword, this attack gets plus 3 or minus 2 damage. Now we have a handful of ranged. We have 2 ranged. We have 10 Weapon Cards. Plus we have another 4, 7, 10, 14 weapon foundations. There's a fair chance that you're going to be able to just randomly do this and the effect is going to go off. So that's fantastic. And if it doesn't, you still get to know what your next check is, which is also valuable in and of itself. All for the cost of commit, which some people may argue is not very good. But I think on this one, in this deck in particular, well worth the commit almost every time. It also has Desperation E. Your ranged or weapon attack gets plus one damage. So once you're in Desperation, it just gets an extra damage, no matter what. Three copies of those bad boys. And we'll go to our last weapon keyword, Foundation. It is Warrior of a Lost Clan. It is a unique, which is why we're only running two. And the reason why we're running two instead of one is because it'll have a flip effect. So we can flip it to do its effect and then play another one later if need be. It again has a 3 block, it has a 6 check, which is another reason why I wanted to run 2 rather than 1, just because more 6 checks is always nice. It has commit, switch the attack speed, and damage values. This will help us push through a handful of stuff, let's say we buff, buff the attack a bunch of Ghost Thief Funeral, we can swap it to make sure it has speed so we can push through. Um, some of these other ones where we have big attacks that we want to get through, we can swap them after buffing its speed or something like that. And it's just nice to have that versatility. It's also great for when an opponent drops their own, you know, huge attack. And they're like, I'm going to buff it, give it plus, you know, 10 damage. And let's say you're fighting Midori on the off chance. They pitch their hand. Then you're just like, cool, I'll swap it. It can have a million speed. I'll take the four or three damage. Not a huge deal. It also has the flip effect. If there is three weapon cards in your card pool, destroy one of your opponent's foundations. Which, again, being able to choose and destroy a foundation is pretty great. The next one here will be a 5 check, 2 diff, 1 high block, Ivy's English Aristocrat. It gives enhanced commit. Your attack with 2 or fewer printed keywords gets 3 speed. And we have a handful of them because we got Ghost Thief Funeral. We got uh, Guilty Throne. We have Bloody Baptism. We do not have that one. We do not have that one. And I think that is it. But... That is still a hefty amount. We have a nice package here that we definitely would love to give three speed to. Uh, three speed on the Ghostly Funeral, fantastic. Three speed on Guilty Throne makes it nine, and its base damage is seven, which is insane. And of course, Bloody Baptism getting a bunch of speed is also pretty awesome. So, of course, it's in there. We got that there. It also allows you to gain three vitality when that attack hits. So again, just amazing value on a commit. It also has, if you decide to, after you reveal any number of cards from the top of your deck, you can gain 3 vitality on a reaction by flipping it. Doesn't happen very often, but it has saved my life at least once. The next card doesn't need an introduction, it doesn't have a block, and it's only a 5 check, but it's Sense of Morals on a 2 diff. It uh, does not count for progressive difficulty, so we can add it into the card pool when we use Nutcracker, and uh, it's just nice for building out on build turns as well. It has a amazing effect if for those who don't know enhance on a plus four you get to ready one of your foundations that has been committed due to an opponent's effect and it's playable well committed so this is an amazing anti-stun card it's great to have a couple in any deck that can run it highly recommend it we got two copies of those bad boys the next one we got two copies of serving the outworld we have commit after an opponent plays a form ability on a non-character card cancel its effects Really nice effects that allows you to just cancel certain form effects such as True Identity or any other thing that they have. If they play some random thing like Revoke on a form, cancel it. Um, there's just plenty of great form abilities that you can just cancel with this. And another main reason it's in the deck is it is a 6 check. It also has an Enhance on a 6 plus. You get to get plus 2 damage or minus 1. We have a decent amount of 6 checks in this deck so sometimes you'll be able to just top deck this or 
more often than not you'll be paying one maybe two any more than that and generally i just don't pay it and i allow it to fail two copies of those two copies of telekinetic mastery again it's a great card run in pretty much any deck that can run it it's a great defensive card it is a two diff three mid block with a five check and it has reaction flip after you discard any number of cards due to your opponent's effect. Commit one of their foundations and draw a card. That doesn't happen as often as you might think, but the second one is the real bread and butter of this card. Reaction on a 6 plus after your opponent increases the speed or damage of an attack. That attack gets plus or minus 2 speed or minus 2 damage. You get to choose regardless of what stat they were increasing. So it's just nice. It's not unique. You could have both of them on the field at once, and then every time they do it, reaction twice. You know, just totally destroy their attack from the ground up anytime they try to increase it in any way. Oops, wrong button again. Flip those bad boys over. And now we get into our one difficulty package, our getting into our spam here. We got two copies of Feifei, three low block, an amazing card you can flip for minus three speed on a five check. Perfect card, clean and simple. The next one is a six check, uh, two low block, and uh, of course one difficulty. It allows you to flip, reveal the top card of your deck on an enhance. So you'll get to see what your next check is, whether it's to do one of the different effects that we have on cards and enhances that allow you to check sixes. You can make sure to see if it's on the top, if it's even worth doing, or if you really need to know if you can make the next check on your attacks, or maybe it's just simply you just want to know if it's a weapon card so you know if the next thing you play you should uh, use this bad boy here and get to draw two cards. It also has reaction after your opponent plays a non-character ability that causes one or more cards to leave your deck or discard pile. Cancel it and draw a card. Or you may draw a card. I don't think in my entire lifetime of playing this game that I've used it more than like twice that specific ability. But... It's a six check and allows you to peek the top, which already buys a spot in the deck at two of. The next card is a main reason it's in here is because of reduction. We got Power Cycle. It's a two mid block on a five check, one diff. Uh, it has a card pool reaction after you block with it to ready one foundation that hasn't been readied. Not too shabby, but the main reason it's in here is enhance your attack, commit, and flip. Add one card from your discard pile into your card pool. And the main thing we're pretty much always going to use that on is our reduction. Like I said before, I have a way to cheat it into the card pool. So on those turns where we're going to string together our final blows, and just to make sure we can have that extra punch and speed, we uh, just power cycle this bad boy into the card pool. It doesn't take up slots in our hand. And uh, it allows us to use it multiple times if we do use it from hand on future turns so two copies of those nice block effect and the ability to cheat in reduction fantastic and uh marrying age will be our last one difficulty it is a zero mid block and it uh, allows you to commit to get plus two speed it does have a four check unfortunately but having the on-demand speed when we need it is a nice thing we don't have a lot of speed buffs outside of the plus ones from original ninja the aristocrat and then yoshimitsu i guess that that's kind of a lot of speed, but having more speed is never a bad thing. It also has a little bit of defense here. After your opponent readies one of their cards during the combat phase, you get to ready a card in your staging area. And if you can't, due to everything being ready, you get to add a card from your hand to your staging area ready. So it's a little bit of defense, I said, mainly because it, it prevents people more often than not from readying their own stuff. And if they do, it allows you to untap things so you'll have more to block with and such. And sometimes it'll allow you just to randomly get a free foundation in. Or an asset. It doesn't necessarily say a foundation. No, it does say a foundation. Has to be a foundation. And the last card in our deck. We have Profane Sanctuary. I just wanted a little bit more spam in here. Given that we're a five-hander, I wanted to try to build as much as possible the first couple turns. And then try to just focus on all in attacks more often than not. So uh, I just wanted a little bit extra here. We have a once per turn enhance discard the top two cards of both players' decks. It's nice if they're stacking their deck or if we would just want to shell cards so we can thin out our deck to kind of see what's out there. Um, it also allows you to flip whenever a breaker ability is played and cancel it. Given that sometimes, more often than not, in this deck, you're going to be dancing a fine line of a bunch of 
higher difficulties, even though you do have the plus two to fall back on, your plan can be ruined by a well-placed break or two that you weren't ready for. So being able to cancel the breaker is nice. And then in a pinch, you can block on high for three plus, and it's a five check. And that brings us to the end of our Yoshimitsu deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed telling you guys all about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile, and I also need to apologize a little bit here. Uh, the overlay is kind of cobbled together. We're in the works to make a more efficient overlay for this style of video. Um, so hopefully by the next deck profile, we'll have a cleaner looking uh, overlay for you guys. Um, if you guys wanted to tell me anything specific about how to upgrade this deck on draft two, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any other suggestions in general about the deck profile format or any decks that you might want me to do a deck profile on, let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in making your own decks, as always, we have our tutorial for that will be in the description as well. It'll help you to make a deck and untap and start playing games with you and your friends. Um, for those of you who don't know, we also have a Patreon. Go ahead and check us out, just like all these fine people have. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Take care, guys. <laughs>